I'm going to record all of this. I'm going to make <laughs> Esper nervous and make them think the show is 15 minutes longer than it is. <laughs> this is a little prank I like to play on my editor. That feeling lasts about 30 seconds yeah. as, as they uh, play the, the recording and realize, <laughs> oh, this isn't the show. That's enough, though. Oh, the, the practical joke is literally being explained to me immediately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spider! The spider is still around! This is episode 292 of the Insert Credit Show, a guided discussion with a panel of video game experts and a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and my best sport in school was kickball. Whoa. Um, Shoot. Let's see, my name is Frank Cifaldi. My best sport in school. Um, I wasn't very good at any of them and, and like i didn't do any extracurricular i just did uh, normal normal pe do your time kind of sports um but uh i was exquisite for some reason at, at making jump shots from approximately the free throw line now i don't mean making free throws i mean if, if you pass to me while i'm approximately there i'm gonna get it in so oh, uh, yeah there's a there's a plaque at my high school about it next to my statue cool frank um, the paint cefaldi is that what they call you yeah had that shot down uh, I'm Tim Rogers, and my best sport in school was uh, well. Let's just say I had a future as a uh, as a uh, uh, a semi professional um, boxer. You know, the kind who uh, you could count on to uh, take a dive in the first <laughs> round, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think I do. <laughs> Very good. That was that was uh, that was who I was. I'm Brandon Sheffield, and uh, my best sport in High school was Aikido. Is that a sport? That's the only thing that, that I did. I'd count it. It was what I did. I did it because you could do that or you could like join the lacrosse team or the soccer team or the water polo team. And I didn't want to do any of that. Oh, I played some lacrosse, did not care for it. Aikido seemed like something that you could do mostly by yourself, which of course was, is not true. It is a it is a martial art. You do it with other people. But mm -hmm. it was the close to doing something by myself and I could uh, try to just like do stuff with my friend instead of having to... Um, have a little there, and also not a lot of judging involved with Aikido. You just you're just all getting better at it together. There's no there's no dads to disappoint. There's no no other teams to be better or worse than. N nobody to uh, get upset if you if you don't make the winning goal of some sort. So you know uh, what you're making a great case here, and you've convinced me it's not a sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, well, yeah, it's uh, it's but however, it is the one activity of all of these that uh, after practicing it for a significant amount of time, you may find yourself able to successfully complete 2024's upcoming hottest TikTok challenge, the take a cop's <laughs> gun challenge. Yeah, so it's true. We did learn how to take knives and guns. So uh, so there you go. Coming soon. We got a guest on this year episode. Uh, let me introduce him, folks. Joining us this week is Defector Zone Dandy Dan McQuaid. Hey, what's up? Thanks for having me on. Sure. Should I also talk about my high school sport? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. Is it high school specifically? Were we supposed I to say I said school. Oh, oh, school. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Everybody well, else seemed to say high school, so I was I was I just thought it was high school. Uh, so I actually box now, Tim. Um, oh, yeah. If Ooh. I if I got into a if I had an actual fight, I would probably lose in the first round. I'm I've been doing it for two years and I'm not very good in oh, high school. Yeah. I was a, I wasn't very good, but I was like a pretty, I was an okay cross country runner. That was the, the thing I did was run distance track and cross country in high school. I like to think I straddled the, the line of jock and nerd in, in my high school back when, you know, I'm, I'm old enough that those were, uh, archetypes oh yeah that like when you when you grow up watching those movies they were stone like, cold oh that's what the world is like and like it's not but you know you think it's like porkies or there whatever. really were basically two types of people in when i was in in my high school there were it, there the the division was like ultra clear it was just like the tv shows um maybe it's not anymore and it hasn't been for a while but uh yeah it was it was very clear who the jocks were at the very least. We've got a lot to talk about. It's been a oh, couple we? weeks since we all recorded together. Um, starting off, a couple big things happened since we left the Summer Games Fest, which a couple of our panelists were not here for, and the Xbox Games Showcase of 2023. Uh-huh. 
Did you see anything in those uh, that you want to talk about? Are we talking about the news now? Uh, yeah, have you seen the news lately? Uh, what was there at those things? Uh, I watched all of those things. They had Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Mm-hmm. They had uh, Spider-Man 2. They had a new Prince of Persia. Mm-hmm. They had Mortal Kombat 1. Yeah, which is very funny. They had Fortnite Wilds. Yeah, there's a Fortnite. They had Sonic Superstars. There's a new Sonic. It's 2D again because the I guess yeah. I looked. I looked at that Sonic. That that might be the only one I have something to say about. I because yeah. I made a dumb joke that they finally announced uh, Sonic Four Episode Three. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. That's basically that's, mm-hmm. that's what Good it joke. looks like. But it does look. Uh, it looks okay. And I think the idea of having multiple characters in the same space is good because I've always talked about how Knuckles Chaotix is actually a pretty good one, mm-hmm. and uh, it's especially one. if you play it with another person and you're willing to just mess around. So like the, the non joke version of this is this is the Sonic that they should have made for the Wii U. Um, sounds like a joke, but it's not. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. 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 Um, that is also, I only watched two things and I don't, Oh, I guess one of them wouldn't have been Xbox. So, uh, one thing, which was the Sonic trailer. Um, and, I don't know. My take on it is like if you're dumb enough not to get the Mania team immediately on a sequel to let them cut loose and do what they want, then I guess you can do something like this. Yeah, that's the next best thing. It's a little bit weird. Frank, did you play that? You played Dead Frontiers. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, we uh, talked about it on here. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm just saying it, you know, the the rhetorical question to sound. I played that as a like the same reason I played like Final Fantasy 15. It's like I want I want just a dumb Japanese game to like have a good time with and 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 not think is great it's um, not trying to have hyper realistic graphics it's not trying speaking to recreate which, exact themes and such uh there's there's that man who who lost his name or whatever yeah the, uh, the new Yakuza's, new Yakuza's, yeah. yeah yeah uh i'll play him my my <laughs> most exciting thing was seeing that the new yakuza which people uh are confused as to whether it's actually a new game or if it's a spinoff or I mean, but they did just announce a Gaiden, so uh, it people were confused as to whether the Ichiban game is the new Yakuza. It clearly is. It is. I just want to tell a story real quick. When I was in Los Angeles in June of 2019, and I interviewed Toshihiro Nagoshi about uh, Judgment, which was just coming out for the PlayStation 4 in America, you know, back in the PlayStation 4 days before we had the PlayStation 5, at the conclusion of the interview, I said, to him or he said to me you know this is my last interview of e3 and i said oh so it's your last interview of the last e3 ever and he laughed and said it does seem like it could be the last e3 ever huh and then i was like yeah and then i'm like what are you doing after this and he's like oh i'm going straight to the airport and uh getting back to work and i was like oh that's cool and then i was like you know if i were you i would stop in hawaii on the way home and then he goes and he goes dude that's actually what i'm doing right (laughs) And I was like, so we started talking about Hawaii for just a few minutes. And I was, I showed him my Leonard's Bakery tote bag that I had in my backpack that I carry, you know, when I travel. And I was like, you should make a Yakuza game that takes place in Hawaii. And he's like, that's been an idea uh, since Yakuza 2 on PlayStation 2. So sense. they finally have said a Yakuza. There, w- there would be so many incredibly cool japanese crime fiction style stories to tell on the island of oahu what island oh, of hawaii would you like this game to be well on? it is it's 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 confirmed it's real it's oahu okay so you get uh, you you get your honolulu mini game's gonna be so that's, good that's a good uh slogan for them it's confirmed it's real it's real it's oahu, it's oahu. <laughs> it's oahu. yeah yeah that's it could be their tour to the board of tourism <laughs> i was in oahu over the summer i was in hawaii for the first time oh last yeah summer oahu. um we were on the big island for a week and then like Oahu for, uh, I don't know, like four days. Oh, you did like the uh, the, the opposite uh, of what the typical tourist would do. That's bold. The yeah, typical yeah, tourist would, would go to the big island for like a day, probably. Oh, right? I like the big island more than big island is nuts. The dude. big island was way more of like another world. Yeah, it, feel, it feels like you're in another place. Yeah, Where, Like we stayed on Waikiki Beach and like my wife was like, oh, I expect it more of a like quaint seashore town and i was like one haha two like it did feel like las vegas without the casinos like oh yeah there were like three louis vuitton stores within like a mile radius of our of our hotel it is a nice beach though it's 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 like 
I, I, I have like a sort of a mild allergy to tourist feeling places. Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco, I think, might be the the most covered with scorpions I can feel outside of an actual scorpion pit. I was um, there last year too. Oh yeah, Fisherman's that, Wharf. That place yeah. is pretty bad, right? Uh, I mean, I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, one not... of my favorite places in New York is Times Square because I'm like. I was just in Times Square yesterday. I'm just one of those people who's like, oh, I saw this in a movie, you know, when I was a kid and and somehow yeah. fall into that. Like, I also like like the financial district. We uh, me and Dan McQuaid used to both work at the same office building in Times Square, except he wasn't there every single day like I was going. Every time I go back there, I'm like, it's it is kind of cool to live a 15 minute subway ride from here. And then it's like time to go home, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can spend too much time there. Like the last oh, time, no. the get... last time I was in Vegas, I did like a couple days there, and then I was like, I need to rent a car and drive out into nature, or this neon is going to like wreck my eyeballs. Oahu is like, what if Times Square was one sixteenth the size, or one sixteenth as intense, and there was also a huge, uh, like inarguably, indisputably beautiful beach attached to it. But in in Oahu, if you rent a car. We did. We did rent a car and drove to like the, the North, North Shore. Beach. Yeah, it was yeah. great. North Shore is uh, North Shore is incredible. Uh, Kailua Beach Park. Did you go there? Did you uh, go to Kailua. I think that's where we went. I can't remember the name. It was like supposedly a great surfing beach. I don't. Surf, oh yeah, yeah. It's 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 great surfing. I mean, park. I think everywhere there is a great surfing beach, but there are obviously levels. Only only half of the year you get e- each each half of the year uh, is, okay. there's a different beach. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, we'll leave it to the bonus content listeners to know which beach is best at which time of the year. Uh, that's a keep that we one. We got a new trailer for the Twisted Metal TV show. The Twisted Metal TV show. Speaking of Las Vegas, that's that yeah. feels like a Las Vegas vacation of a TV show. <laughs> yeah. Are Are you guys into the lore of Twisted Metal already? I didn't. I honestly didn't know there was any. You didn't know. You just thought these these people were just attacking each other in cars. I feel no like reason. I played that first game a ton, <laughs> and I yeah, I just thought they were attacking them in the cars there's lore but it's all it's all relegated to the instruction manual or some weird i spent a night reading the twisted metal wiki there's fmvs aren't aren't there like fmvs yeah maybe yeah there there's a couple cutscenes. yeah my my like psx was on like a little 13 inch tv so i couldn't see what was going on (laughs) couldn't see any graphics. it's uh all of the car drivers are are they are they're escaped or not escaped they are they are contracted from some kind of a psychiatric hospital to com- for uh, for serial killers to compete against one another uh, in a car combat game. I thought they were fighting against each other for like a wish. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Well, no, they're 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 competing against one. I said contract. I don't know what. There's some evil, uh, uh, is, uh, like masochistic billionaire. Uh, uh, masochistic is sadist uh, sadistic uh, who cares which one he is it can be both yeah he's probably a little bit of, a little bit of is both. it like uh mortal combat where like there are some like rich guys in the tournament you know like uh i think he's more like an evil wizard there's Ooh. there's one guy in twisted there metal. is a lot of lore in this there's one guy in twisted metal who's like wrongly accused right like he's he was like framed by the government and he's trying to escape and he's like the hero yeah i think that's right? jacks what in Mortal Kombat or in, yeah? Uh, there, well, I mean, there's in, a there's a Jackson in Twisted Metal, or is that Axel? Yeah, yeah, series, I guess. yeah. The one whose aren't whose hands and feet are attached to big wheels. That TV series looks so Stars Core, doesn't it? Yeah. Did you see it? It looks like it, it looks like a VHS tape, like handed out with a toy. <laughs> uh, it looks really weird because like Will Arnett plays Sweet Tooth, right? Am I am I gonna have this him. wrong? He's the voice. No, he, he's he's just the voice. Because it's yeah. um pro wrestler Samoa Joe is the is the body is the body. Yeah. Oh, what well, Dan McQuaid knows about this. Uh, you know more about this than I do. This is good. So like that's just such a weird move, isn't it? Yeah. To have a it's like something they would do in uh I've watched a lot of Chinese TV shows in the last year, so I'm not making this statement out of hand. Um, it's like something they would do in a Chinese TV show is a composite a face on a body uh that's a cartoon face and then have a different actor do the voice and the body like it's a that's just it's it's a very strange maneuver i have uh, a i have a question for all of you sorry i'm a journalist i can't help but ask go for a million it. questions but you you all understand that so i have been on a video game like news blackout because I wanted to avoid seeing anything about Zelda before it came out because I was like, oh, I'm going to play it, right? Like, uh-huh. I'm gonna, I, like I'm definitely going to get this game. 
And then like when it came, I like when it like on release day, I was busy and then I just didn't get around to it. And so I'm still in my video game news blackout. And my goal was I've been up in New York all week. I'm going to bring my switch. I'm going to buy Zelda on the way up. And then I'm like halfway up to New York and I'm like, oh, I forgot my switch. Um, <sighs> so I just bought it now. Zelda at the Nintendo store oh, in, yeah? in Rockefeller Center. I wanted to be more impressed by the Nintendo store. Oh, but it is the, a, it's not super impressive. Is but it? the no, but the the T-shirts were cheap. I was surprised the, the you shirts, mean cheap in quality and no, in price. Like, or, the cheap, the t-shirts were like 20 to $25 and the hoodies were like 50. And I yeah. feel like usually that stuff goes for well, way they more. Just get them, they just get them from AliExpress. So yeah. yeah. But I mean, I usually they, they can still just like pump up the, the price. I was just there uh, two weeks ago after that was, it's like my second time, third time ever going in New York was just two weeks ago. I had some friends in town. I do like the big sculptures that then have signs next to them that, that are like, please do not touch pikachu do they still do they still have an attempt at a little museum and it's like a mario 2 that we found at a thrift store and it 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 has shrunk and it is now just like the size of my tv stand i i did not see any museum whatsoever oh it's up on the second floor i was on the second floor there it's you can blink and miss it it's it's uh clearly i did so it's weird the second floor feels like uh like an e3 booth now which kind of brings me back when I was just there two weeks ago. It got me nostalgic for E3 because uh, it felt like a little tiny section of an E3 booth because they have a big uh, Link statue uh, for Tears of the Kingdom and then some LED screen behind him uh, playing uh, the logo of the game or whatever. It was really classy looking, but it's half of the god darn store. So my question normally when I ask questions, I don't do. I'm not like one of those sports writers who at the press conference like gives like basically just says like a set a paragraph long all right let's call this our second topic then okay no so i have been on my video game blackout how have people reacted to the new final fantasy because that because i was like 14 when that came out that's one of my favorite games i really enjoyed the remake i don't really know how people how that was received on the whole but are people like excited for this are people disappointed by it you're talking about 16 there's a demo and apparently people really like uh, in terms of uh I'm not going to say what I think of it uh, just yet, but uh, it seems like people there's like kind of a rampant. It's actually good vibe that people are people are, are talking about how it's a uh, people who thought it wasn't going to be good are liking it. So so did people think that the first seven remake was just sort of. Oh, wait, you mean. You yeah, mean, I mean the new seven. Oh, you mean Rebirth. Yeah, yeah, Rebirth. So did you, you didn't see the trailer for it. No, I did not see the trailer for oh, that. Oh, man, the trailer was quite substantial. You should check the trailer. Okay. Out. It's, uh, I, will, I will watch that. It, it, it's, uh, so it, it's interesting that they announced the, the trailer or they released this trailer so soon before they released a demo of final fantasy 16 which is like a week before they released final fantasy 16 and now they've got you thinking about final fantasy 7 remake part 2 um final fantasy 7 rebirth as it's called it's it seems a little curious uh marketing wise for them to have these two games that kind of trampling one another's toes or whatever but i think it rules i think i think the idea of putting out this big bodacious trailer that shows off a whole bunch of it basically demonstrates hey we actually made this game you know it's like it's like we actually made a game it's not it's not just a hypothetical idea anymore we we made we made the second game it's basically done here it is you're seeing all these systems and locations and characters and and whatever whatever i think it's it's uh it's in square enix's best interest to do something like that um back in uh what 1999 2000 they uh they announced final fantasies 9 10 and 11 all on the same day oh uh, yeah i at remember the, that the square the square millennium event right so <laughs> i think i think having two final fantasies with big trailers uh being anticipated at the same time is in their best interest especially since they very recently uh jettisoned all their other ips so they can make uh non-fungible tokens or whatever right so it's like the, the fact that I think they need all the all the help they can get. It just it kind of shows off the uh, it, it it shows that they still do have some kind of a bounty of creativity. And I think that that seems to be uh, like what what the cool people are thinking and then there's people who are like it's a bad idea. I've seen some people saying they think it's a bad idea to have these two trailers, uh, these two games just in the in the marketing phase at the same time. I think it's brilliant to be perfectly honest. It's certainly in line with their uh, current tactic of 
just release everything simultaneously, which seems to have been working out super poorly for them, but they love doing it. So well, just... no, okay, okay. So last year they did release what, like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on Wikipedia right now. Uh, they released 34 games last year that were all uh, the same font in the title. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, games like Triangle Strategy and uh, Harvestella and, and whatever, right? The Lovely Shovelware. Something like 34 games, Lovely Shovelware, Lovelware. Those games are are one thing, but I mean, this is two. It, it is bold. It's in line with them doing that, but the fact that it's two tentpole games at the same time, it's pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't do it, but it's interesting that they want to try that. Yeah, I mean, they've got the they've got the human resources. They've got the the money. Well, I think that's what they don't have. I think they're. Uh, I think that it to me, it looks like they're desperate. They need to get the money now before uh, everybody gets cold feet. Yeah. in their investment group and so they're just um putting them out both at once i don't know if that's well might yeah, just be really, that's when they're done but i i still don't think it's the best idea myself they've they've been fumbling the business football for a while with regard to not making stuff right so like with regard to uh not making hitman was the first domino to fall right letting letting hitman escape and then uh uh just like absolutely butterfingering tomb raider and deus ex and whatnot and then uh i guess they bungled their marvel stuff as well right they bungled it they just let it go Mm -hmm. um and then they made this forespoken game which uh can we actually it's been a couple of months now would you all like to hear something neat uh game rules it's really cool huh if you want to check it out at some point uh before the before we start talking about the games of the year in the next six months brandon it'll probably be on sale for 12 bucks or three bucks somewhere check it out yeah, neat. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll check it before it's all before it's all over. Yeah, I mean, it 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 is kind of cool to turn the Japanese voice acting on. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so that game was them trying to make an original IP that was actually pretty cool, and for multiple reasons, kind of business and creative related. Uh, you know, where, where business and creativity uh, uh meet, or whatever the E three slogan is, where <laughs> business becomes fun. So <laughs> where where they they got their business and fun crossed uh, for that Forspoken game. It's cool to make a new IP, but do you got to do it like that, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm on, this, I'm on team real smart of them to have two marquee Final Fantasies that are very different from one another popping off at the same time. Let's see how it works out for them, I would say. Let's see how it works out for them. A bold maneuver. So this next question is mainly for Brandon, but I'm hoping the rest of you can help out. Uh, uh, why not? I'll try. What game is Necrosoft making exclusively for the Apple Face computer? Oh, <laughs> the face computer. computer. Well, um, that's a weird one because the the old Face computer. First of all, they fooled my programmer. He thought that you could see through it. Oh yeah, that's how it starts. I mean, and you can see through it. You can see through it through the camera. But he thought it was. We've been looking at CG too long. He thought it was actual AR stuff where you could see through glasses and, and he was like this this is gonna be how things should be but then he i didn't know that either for what it's worth yep uh, i'm learning this right now it's got a little oled screen on the front yeah Frank. it projects your eyeballs it, it well projects... yeah i just kind of thought it would only like like it, i don't know i thought it'd be clear until it projected you know it'd be one of those screens and then it'd be maybe a little bit see-through i don't know i don't know what i thought yeah it, it seemed like it was gonna be that and it's not um, it is funny that they showed games, but they basically showed you playing a PS5 on a big, um, essentially <laughs> projection screen in your. So I think what the one that we're gonna make is uh, is Demon School, and you can just play it on your PS5 on the big screen. No, <laughs> to, to to be fair, that that cinematic mode on the PlayStation VR, where it just projects uh, like a twenty foot wide screen, like yeah, it's probably pretty ten good. feet in front of you. It actually is pretty cool. I played Elden Ring like that for about an hour and when i was done i was sweating like a god darn champagne ham like <laughs> i thought i was gonna throw up and i don't know if it counts as dry heaving when it's just air uh <laughs> but i did kind of vomit some well, air it sounds dry yeah it's i mean dry heaving is like it's kind of a misnomer because there is liquid yeah there is there is liquidity in there it's just not it doesn't have food in it but the real answer i actually talked about this um, n- not with actually m- team members, but uh, you remember that game I Am Rich on the iPod or the iPhone or the i the yeah the... iOS devices yeah on iOS devices I I just make I Am Rich two on this thing because you already spent thirty five hundred bucks 
on that. What's another thousand? What's another thousand, 10K, whatever. Just do some, uh, I wouldn't actually do that. I don't know. I think I'd I'd do something like a uh, a board game or something uh, easily understandable. Both of you, like two people wearing those things could, could play together and see each other in the same space. Or finally, Milo. <laughs> finally, you can make Milo. I think it'd be cool to design a game that the person wearing it sees something that they have to explain to the person who's not wearing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do who... do Jackbox for for that. Oh, uh, keep talking and nobody. Explodes. That's just regular VR, though. I mean, like what 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 well, I would, yeah, basically, I don't, I don't yeah. work for Necrosoft, but um, I'd start you know prototypey wise. It'd be sort of a simple um arcade game entirely controlled by your eyes um because it does eye tracking and i believe it probably does it really well um, yeah and so it'd be you know like based on like where your eyes are focusing if you're i don't know zapping a little guy coming out of a window in a grid or something like that right like it's kind of start there and see where it goes i did some of that in um so eve that eve game that was a shooter did some of that and uh, my eyes got so tired after like Five minutes. I'll bet. Yeah, it was rough. But uh, it, mine's going to come out at launch. Okay. And everyone yeah. who has it is going to get it, and I'm going to make $500 yes. and then uh, move <laughs> on. Yeah. Could you remake, like, like um, Oh Dear in, like, a first-person setting, sort of, with the goggles? People keep asking um, if we could do Oh Dear VR, but the part of the whole thing with that is is that there there's nothing except what's in the screen. There's nothing else. So if you look away from it in any direction it's instantly broken yeah you would you would have to reprogram the whole thing oh but this is what ai is for haven't you ever wondered what's beyond the borders of the mona lisa mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, no. that's right okay well there there it is we just ai it up and then... uh if you do if you do it it needs to be a sequel called o o veer and like the <laughs> logo has v and oh, r yeah. like bigger O-V-R. than these. just like yeah further just just dig dig the hole deeper <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I would say so uh, this Apple thing I want to go on the record right here uh, first can I say oh dear venison reality uh, that's yeah okay. why not oh yeah. very good very good it's not uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm acknowledging that I heard that it's not it's, you know I'm not I'm not upset <laughs> at it or anything it's 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 what it's what it is it's um, what it is one of us enjoyed that joke more of the people in this room I I just want to say I want to go on the record right here right now. Uh, 4.57 p.m. on uh, uh, Thursday, June 15th, 2023. I want to go on the record as saying I think the Apple... uh, The Apple... What's it called? Wait, hold Don't tell me. Don't tell me. The Apple... uh, I I know. The Apple Vision Pro. Yeah, there we go. The Apple Vision Pro. I think the Apple Vision Pro is really cool, and I think uh, it's great, and I'm I'm on their team because I don't see anybody else uh, on their team, and just wouldn't it be... Wouldn't it be a fine pony to bet on to uh, to be on the record as saying I think it's cool? I'm just sounding like I'm 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 betting on it for uh, for very very uh, bad reasons here. But you know, I mean, you could probably get good odds right now. I do feel like the response to it has not been great. <laughs> How do the odds pay off? It's like uh, if it sells a certain amount, or I think you're going to see a second or third generation of this thing. Certainly. Apple's a- Apple's nomenclature has been really really rock solid for the last 20 years. Pro clearly means uh they're starting at the high tier and they're going to work their way down. There's going to be Apple Vision Air at some point. As a person who lives in New York City, New York Manhattan, um which is the greatest city in the world, baby, which you know if you have to say it as often as they do you know, I'm in the supermarket the other day buying a jar of pickles. I bought a bad jar of pickles last week uh, with a dented uh, safety seal. So it was like it was it was like chewing on dog toys. And this is the greatest city in the world. Greatest the one city that, in the world. The one baby. that sold you bad. bad pickles. Yeah. You got to buy the, the, the locally pickled pickles. Basically, the uh, the other, we're getting further off topic. I'm in the supermarket. And there's just a, <laughs> an ad comes on the radio going, New York, New York, greatest city in the world donate your car you know and it's like and then i'm like i'm like okay and then there's an ad that's one eight seven seven cars for kids right the cars for kids ad comes on every time every time i'm in the supermarket and i'm like what do kids need cars for they can't drive and then like nice. seconds later another ad comes on he's like new york city the greatest city in the world presents and i'm just like did i just hear two ads for New York being the greatest city in the world, 
sandwiching the Cars for Kids ad, and one of the New York <laughs> ads was about donating That's cars. Done, right? <laughs> it wasn't about selling your car. It was about donating, donating your, your car. car. So as a person who lives in this city, I can tell you two things off the top of my head. Number one, I lived in California when Apple announced the AirPods uh, Bluetooth uh, earbuds, which uh, are you know the only Bluetooth earbuds that actually work. And I had to buy 20 pairs of $20 off-brand ones in order to learn that the $200 ones are definitely the best. Everybody made fun of those when they were announced. I moved to New York and hundreds of them I saw per day, right? Uh, and I'm like, oh, interesting. Uh, it's just a normal thing here. Number two, I can tell you, we need to get the phones out of people's uh, the faces. We need to get the people, people just there staring at their phones as they walk. And uh, I saw a guy got hit by a delivery scooter the other day because he was looking at his phone and the guy on the scooter was looking at his phone <laughs> and he was and uh, I just watched it happen. I'm standing there for like eight seconds and I'm like, man, that they're going to they're, they're going to hit each other. And I'm just like cars for kids jingle playing out of the speakers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have screamed at, "Hey, he's walking there." <laughs> he's walking there. He, and then yell to the other guy, "He's scooting there." Yeah. And it's like I'm just like we got to get the phones out of people's hands and onto their faces. Um, and I'm I'm <laughs> yeah. looking at the the number of Uber driver or Uber eats a scooter driver bike driver related catastrophes that i have either witnessed or almost witnessed in my little uh, not super densely populated neighborhood alone i'm looking at the that apple vision pro presentation and i'm just imagining a little google maps on one side you know and uh like a, a, a your your delivery app thing on the other side half translucent right and i'm just like this is a this is a thing that can be used by people and everyone is having a we're, we're all all of us we're having a real good time making fun of the thirty five hundred dollar price tag because we should but uh there's there's gonna be te- first it's gonna start with teens and then you know at first it's gonna and then you know there's gonna be the 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 delivery drivers the couriers amazon's people are all gonna have i guess the amazon version of it and they're gonna be recording all the time it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty miserable i have uh, yeah. said that i will i will put tape over people's um <laughs> uh, vis- vision arrays and watch them bonk into trees because uh, we successfully shamed the Google Glass out of existence, and I, I hope we could do I the would, same. I would personally suggest not uh, touching another person's property uh, in public. First of all, as a person who lives in New York, <laughs> and sure. uh, uh, have had people grab my backpack to try to ask me if I want their mixtape, and uh, when you're living every three seconds, afraid of a mass shooting bursting out on the subway, for example, which it's gonna happen. It happened at the subway station where I used to live two years after I lived there. You don't, I, I just I don't want, don't touch my backpack in public, man. Certainly. But also don't record me in public. So there's a, there's a bit don't of a. Don't record me uh, either. Yeah. Well, your, your backpack does not have a camera on it. So you're fine. It's a bad wor- world with multiple flavors, I'd say. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, at least we got, at least we got more than one flavor of bad in this world. Doesn't matter. Um, All I'm, right. well, I guess I'm done. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm just saying uh, these things are going to become normal and we'll uh, leave it to Apple to normalize. It. I don't like I'm not going to say it looks good or cool, right? It, because it doesn't, right? It doesn't look good or cool, but it does look like they definitely solved probably buckets of hundreds of problems each that the likes of uh, the makers of Google Stadia, for example, never even considered. I'm talking about Google Glass. I just saw people being like, Google Glass was nine years ago. And it's like, actually, I think it was like seven, but also maybe it was nine. But also this looks like a finished thing. And I don't want one. And I think it's officially where my uh, my 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 capsule begins to separate from the rocket of technology. I think watching that presentation, I was like, you know what? I think I got everything I need over here. I got my nice TV. I got my retro tank. There's there's a point in this journey of technology where I'm I'm going to just not participate anymore. And it looks like they're getting there. And it's like we're that's about there. It's about where it is. Yeah, we're we're almost, almost at the point ready to die. where I can just be like, I like old old video games. I play the old ones and uh, I hit balls at the driving range and you know whatever. Right. Well, my next question is also about change. Oh, why not? So something Tim and I talk about sometimes is Formula One racing. 
And oh, yeah. one of Love the interesting things about this sport to me is the way that they will change the rules of the sport between each season. Oh, it's meticulous. I love it. One thing I would like to ask you is that if you had the power between seasons to change any gameplay rule for any professional sport, how would you use it? Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. Wait, well, this is amazing because you and I recorded like a whole video episode about this that did not air because yeah. I quit uh, my old job. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah, not told back, about this. Back at Deadspin, yeah. Yeah, uh, it was, I ran a video <laughs> series called Commissioner for a Day. Yeah. Where you got to change one rule. Um Wow yeah so uh i'm Tim's, really good at my job you yeah this is amazing yeah this, you've seen an unreleased video spiritually basically i will say tim's was uh make the football out of meat <laughs> yeah it was it was it was very good there was a <laughs> i was excited to see you know it was like just after you had done that video for <laughs> kotaku that was like football oh like, yeah yeah god loves football yeah and that's when i like bullied you into coming on my little stupid show we had we had access to like such a nice tv studio wait do do they not make it out of meat anymore uh is the football made out of pig skin skin meat skin's meat ask my dog i think skin is meat my my uh my stance was that skin is not sufficiently meaty enough that i want it i want it made out of actual meat that okay. rots during the game. And is it inflated or is it a solid chunk? It's a solid piece of meat. Like if you really want to get out like there. Like pr- prosciutto, a big uh, cured ham hock. Yeah, like if you really want to get out there and you want to risk uh, uh, all sorts of concussions and brain damage, you should be you should be butter <laughs> handling a big old floppy, sloppy, greasy, like a hunk of meat. And then I was like, there should also be a vegetarian version. <laughs> made, out of, made in made it made with the cooperation of the impossible meat oh, so. <laughs> and i feel like the the fake meat has gotten so much better in the like four years yeah. since we recorded that in, in some vectors quote unquote better i wonder how aerodynamic it is compared to real meat well no, you'd, it would, it'd be carved you can carve a turkey jerry so okay, it'd, 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 it'd be carved in a way I, I came up with mine i got it all right what you yeah. got uh, i'm uh I'm, I'm going for the nba here okay all right and uh, I'm I'm kind of sick of people not practicing their free throws. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. And so what I propose, well, I don't even have to propose it. I'm just enforcing this, right? What What I'm making happen yes. is that um, if you miss a free throw shot, um, you have to take three laps uh, around the, <laughs> the 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 basketball. Uh, 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 what is it? Court. The court. Court. It's called Thank a, you. A court. Yeah. You have to take three laps around the court while everyone watches. Um, that's that's yeah. very good. The game stops. Yeah, uh, I I have one. I just saw that. Uh, I don't know the names of the people, but I saw that Dodgers pitcher. Oh, Duck Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. kiss the ball before throwing it to first base to get somebody out. And I think that would be a fun little rule to add. You have to kiss. You after you catch the ball, you have to kiss it <laughs> before you throw it. Oh, I I also have a baseball one. Uh, uh, the one it. I've been thinking about is I think a batter should get a choice after they hit the ball whether they want to run to first base or to third base. You should be able to get to the bases in any order you want. <laughs> I believe there is a sort of comedy variant of baseball where you can go either way. Yeah, it's called yeah. Who's on First. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know like where if it's actually played. You know, there's that team like the Savannah Bananas who are like... The- <laughs> yeah. The Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. Um, I don't really have much patience for that. Like <laughs> basketball is a sport where I do want like some hijinks during it. Baseball is is not is not one. This is, there's just not a whole for, lot of for stuff. some reason. There's not a whole lot of stuff you can get away with on a baseball diamond. Sometimes you want to run left. What's the funniest thing that can happen in baseball is what a rundown. Right, where you got a guy going back and forth. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's the funniest thing that happens in baseball. A game ended last night when a team was going for a double play. The Nationals were going for a double play, and they threw the ball off the Astros runner's head, and then the other guy on the Astros came around to score when the yeah, ball. There's ricocheted. plenty of funny stuff. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, but but it but it's like the funny stuff just sort of happens in the. S- someone someone could get hit in the butt with the baseball. That's funny. Oh yeah, so that like what do you get like an extra strike if you get hit in the butt or, or yeah, an extra, extra extra run i don't know no the 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 pitcher gets points like the pitcher gets enough points and then it counts as a run if they hit enough people in the butt i i think i think if the pitcher uh if the pitcher gets a base hit 
um that no if the pitcher yeah. hits a home run it should subtract a run from the, from other, the team. other team well the pitcher is <laughs> no longer bat now so there's designated hitters in both, both well, no, leagues. I, want, I, I want pitchers to have to bat pat pitchers have to bat so now. so you can make this rule because it doesn't even matter anymore pitchers have to bat they have to bat okay well that's a rule you could you could yeah suggest yeah, yeah we could roll the, it back yeah the pa- pitchers have to bat we have a pitcher who proves that you can bat now yeah we do yeah there's there's the, uh, the floodgates are open no pitcher has any excuse. Oh, pitching is just so hard. Uh, I can't uh, pitch and bat at the same time. Uh, well, first of all, at the same time, of course not. Uh, so we're not asking you to hit your own pitches, <laughs> right? Maybe we should be. Maybe we should be. I have another one, which oh, is yeah. uh, for all the uh, the thirsty ladies out there, and I use that in a non-gendered sense, based okay. on many comments I've heard about baseball uh, that change the uniform, uniform so they have to wear uh, chaps. So their ah. butts are out. I've heard many requests for this feature, and I think it's finally time we give it to them. That, that'll uh, increase attendance. Sun's out, buns out. Sun's out, buns out, etc. Yeah, they're they're going to be all red and toasty from the <laughs> from the sun. Uh, that the end. I think um, quarterbacks should have to disclose who they're going to give the ball to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> C- call their shot like corner pocket. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Yeah, right. it's not fair. Yeah, that's that's good. You didn't call it. <laughs> In soccer, I think uh, if if the, a game is scoreless at halftime, um, one ball should be added to the field. Yeah, every yeah. Ten multi ball, multi ball, every ten, yeah, every ten minutes until uh, <laughs> until somebody scores, and it gets dropped from above. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, from a drone. Well, we've got drones, By a dragon. So it's, it's easy. Yeah. Dragon shaped drone. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I honestly think that would that would make soccer more exciting. It'd be more exciting for me. Yeah. As a as a sports writer, I like all these rules. I'm I'm Terrific. all for it. Good. All right. All good. God, multi ball soccer would be so good. I think you have the power to make them happen. You've got the connections into the sports world. You're basically the yeah. commissioner of all sports. I will I will suggest all of these next Thank time you. I'm I talk to any league. Including the, the impossible meat football, please. Yes. <laughs> I want to see that because then they have to cook it and eat it. The winner gets to eat it at the end. The winner gets to eat it. The winner has to eat it. The winning quarterback has to eat it or (laughs) Or they lose. Or he gets hit in the head with a sledgehammer until he has to retire. Yeah. (laughs) You don't win the game unless you eat the football. That's right. You've got to eat it whilst being chased by the entire other team. Not like every every guy on the other team gets to chase. And they play Yankee Sex. Let's take a break. This is 292. 292. Are you out of your mood? Welcome back to Insert Credit. It's time for us to go to the dirt bag. This is the point of every episode where we take a question submitted by one of our listeners who are kind enough to subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash insert credit, where for that nominal donation, they get access to a form that lets them submit these questions. They also get monthly bonus episodes. Another cool stuff. And they get one raffle ticket, uh, possibly yeah. entitling them to uh, the prize of <laughs> one million cold, hard dollars in cash. <laughs> That's right. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I just posted something fun, which was I was looking for my early writings about E3, like pre-insert credit writings. And I found Ooh. one thing. I found one thing from... 2001 before right before insert credit started from the old website that i wasn't really even working for anymore uh that was basically just some guy's blog but so zone is that, was that the name that. of the site it was called hero graphics and then it was called omc <laughs> games <laughs> we're basically um, but zone but i'm gonna zone? say hero graphics with an x at the end of it oh you know it oh uh, <laughs> yes you know it. i got involved Absolutely. because because that I'd guy was there purporting to make a, a new jaguar game and i was excited about that and so that's mm. why i started writing for so that this has been guys, your brand forever blog in uh in in high school oh yeah if you if you look at the thing that i wrote on the patreon which you have to pay to read <laughs> new you'll thing see for old system i'm in you will see that i have not changed significantly <laughs> in that time the things oh, that i was good. excited about like are are will not be foreign to you Interestingly, if you read my old writing, you will just glimpse a completely different uh, fictionalized amalgamated uh, presentation of myself than I currently exhibit. So but it's basically, you know, neither of them is anywhere near the real me. So good luck, everyone. Thank you. (laughs) I'll just read you one sentence. 
Okay. What can I say? The GameCube does not impress me yet. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> didn't impress you yet. What about that handle? It it, impress, it impresses me now. I'm actually quite impressed with the GameCube these days. I mean, you know, if you if you have ever touched video game development in any aspect and uh, 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 the technical art uh, in Legend of Zelda Wind Waker doesn't impress you, uh, you're a liar. Uh, there's so much stuff going on in that game. It's also, how'd they incredibly... get all that stuff in that tiny little cube? Yeah, little tiny. Oh, the power. It was IBM on that tiny little power. disc. On that tiny, little tiny little cube. disc, tiny little cube. Yeah, it was a little disc. I don't think anything can fit on there. I'm. I still consider it magic. I love those little discs. Yeah, man. You look at a hue card for the Turbo Graphics, and you're like, how how they get anything in this? It's so tiny. The thing about the GameCube discs is you can actually fit like several of them in your mouth, in your mouth. Uh, between between two. Well, let me finish my sentence. <laughs> okay, look, look, I'm going to start this over so it sounds <laughs> okay. better. All thing, right, the interesting you. thing about the GameCube discs uh, is that you can actually fit several of them on top of a slice of bread, and they don't jut out the sides when you, you if you don't like seeing your lunch meat. Yeah. When you eat a sandwich. Yeah. Um, it's very useful for people like my brother who. Who can't have the lunch meat jutting out the side of the sandwich? Who eat GameCube? Well, yeah, yeah well, that's if you're, a cold if, if, cut. If you're eating like a Dreamcast game, you're gonna see a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. put that inside a little bit. You want those little discs? GD you don't have that to cut GD the ROM on a GameCube disc. Anyway, mm-hmm. <laughs> this week's question comes from Personal Matthew. Uh, Personal okay, Matthew yeah. asks: With the release of Tears of the Kingdom not having button remapping, it's restarted the debate on whether developers should always allow remapping and or should work to make the default controls as universal as possible. What does the panel think? There's always a a situation lately where it is important to understand that the Japanese video game developers are, uh, with, with, with comical certainty, not plugged in at all to the most rampant discourse topics we have going on uh, our social media. So for stuff like accessibility, I've seen... A few Japanese game developers be quoted sometimes either out of context or in dubious context or or, uh, you know, just kind of nebulously or loosely be quoted saying things that sound like very strictly anti accessibility. Right. And it's only because they're being asked a question that they don't really understand. Like, I, I believe someone asked somebody like, why can't you remap some buttons in Zelda? And uh, somebody was like, well, we put the buttons where we thought they were the best. For players and it was just like phrased in a way that uh if, if you're eating some kind of a uh, of a brain kool-aid that makes you just want to believe japanese game developers hate accessibility or whatever it's like it, you could easily convince yourself of that from the way he'd said this stuff but uh i think that's an important uh, uh, uh head note to make here if that's even a thing but it's like uh uh nintendo has notoriously notoriously in the past kept their menus too lean right they like the idea of a menu that looks like duplo blocks i was just playing (laughs) skyward sword on the on the nintendo switch last week i played a bunch of it um cool game but you know those zelda games all those zelda games from the the nintendo 64 on have these really i mean it looks like fine dining cuisine you know made it with duplo blocks where it's these big old big giant fields on menus that that have little tiny things in them, right? So it's like they they, they don't want to give you a whole lot of options. Like they feel like having a menu that has too much stuff on it makes it look too much like, I don't know, a spreadsheet or work or, or, or whatever, right? So it's like there have been for the longest time, people have been crying out for like, can we just have an option to turn off the, the sound of low health in a Zelda game, the, the incessant buzzer and beeper can we have an option to turn off the sound effect when your stamina is like running low in zelda skyward sword when it gets to like 50 percent, it starts making this 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 klaxon of a sound at you which is just incredibly offensive to my finer sensibilities uh not to mention those of uh, other people like there's just stuff that they just won't they won't put in their menu and they have always been pretty anti button remapping menus you know nintendo always has been uh and it's to a point where sometimes it's it's infuriating or bizarre i mean some of their games have had it like super metroid did right but like in super metroid the default is jump is a and shoot is x where every other super nintendo game 
up to that point had been Y for shoot and B for jump, right? So it's like they just chosen two different buttons because they're like this is our house we can do what we want nintendo's always had that weird kind of attitude and i don't think any of it has anything to do with vindictiveness or hatred of people who want to do it their way and it's just ignorance they're just not looking they're the inventors of a lot of these things right having said that all game consoles should at least at, at the system level let me remap my buttons and even include in the system ui just include for me uh, the option to save profiles, like the Xbox Elite controller. The Xbox accessories menu lets you remap the buttons on any Xbox controller you have on Xbox, and you can even switch between profiles in the menu. And it's really, really nice if you're a person with wrist pains or, or whatnot, or even if you're not and you're just a person who wants to Burger King have it your way. Uh, I think that's how it should be. And that's really all I got. Uh, I'm sorry if that was uh, too much information. How much extra work is it for a developer to oh, I can answer that. allow remapping buttons? Uh, it's it's a it's a fair amount of extra oh, work. Okay, yeah, um, okay. It's it's not like it's not terrible, but there's a lot of there's a lot of back end stuff that you need to do. Like for example, you need to make sure that because you you don't want to do it specifically for every platform so you want to make something generalized and you kind of have to build all that and then you have to make sure that it auto detects the correct buttons so that you know say you're playing on the pc and you plug in a switch controller versus an xbox controller versus a playstation controller you need to make sure that it actually maps the the right buttons you have to make all those icons then there's of course the people who will get very mad at you if you don't include good keyboard and mouse controls and once you got keyboard you got to pretty much allow remapping of every key on the keyboard so that people can know where to like can get whatever mm-hmm. configuration they want there is a but lot for like a nintendo game that's like just on the nintendo switch yeah. Uh, yeah it's a lot easier it's less work but it's still it's still work it's still work it's still work and, and there's a lot of testing involved nobody likes doing menu stuff uh, no matter if they say they do they're a liar usually yeah. right i learned that our, our uh, Shane Marks, he does all the menu stuff, and uh, he doesn't like it, he says, because he doesn't want anyone else to have to do it. So that's what it's, he does. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very important to note that like the richest man in the world at one point got rich because he made some menus for a computer. Uh, that's yeah, Bill Gates, right? True. So it's like, that's that's how that's that's basically how much work menus are, right? Uh, so I just it's a, had one more little thing to say, which is that I do support Remap a lot because, for example, in... Uh, tactics games we're making a tactics game the the direction that pushing up makes you go can either feel natural or completely break your brain i think there was i think it was rap city um i'm not sure if it was that there there was one of those playstation one tactics games where up hitting up went to the right instead of to the left uh oh yeah i I just i just couldn't couldn't handle it because it's on a uh uh, it's on a, it's on an isometric grid, so it's on an isometric grid. So you have to choose whether up goes right or left, basically. Um, yeah, a lot of your more modern isometric video games just have a uh, cardinal direction movement in them. Well, yeah. they're not always on grids, and that's so. another choice as well. So, uh, but yeah, we we put in the choice where the default hitting up on the D pad goes because for me, I think you should use an analog stick if you're in this space and when you when it's analog it's whatever direction it's just one to one cardinal directions but if you use a d-pad people expect it to snap to grid because and the people using a d-pad will expect that because the only people using the d-pad are people who are old enough to feel like they should use uh-huh. a d-pad for that mm-hmm. and uh, if you give them the wrong direction they're going to be like well I, I just cannot play this game so uh so it's important. So we got remap even in our in our dang demo that you can't play right now, but soon you can play it again. Anyway, that's what I have to say about it. Remapping's good. I've got one more question. The Gran Turismo movie oh, is yeah. based on a true story. We'll see how grand it is. About a Gran Turismo player who uses his experience with the game to become a professional race car driver. Mm-hmm. Are there any other true video game stories that could be made into movies? Yeah, gamer, game three R, die in the game, die for real. Mm-hmm. did that really happen yeah that really happened that whole horror scenario that was all real you know I've... who did that happen to the uh <laughs> wizard is also a true story that's true oh, yeah those yeah. those kids hitchhiked across the country to see some dinosaurs to, to play uh mario brothers 3 did you say mario oh my goodness i heard it in real he life did say mario he did We're say on the mario. east coast they say mario 
Um, it, the, the movie was crazy because it was the true story of the Nintendo World Championships, which didn't happen until the next year, but it actually came <laughs> out exactly, <laughs> exactly like Exactly like that. It was a way to make a commercial. Like that show Early Edition where he gets tomorrow's newspaper, but a whole movie. Yeah. So yeah. when when I was in college, I did a story. It was, uh, it was a nice slow August time, and I wrote it for the Philly Daily News where I played um, – this guy, David Seitchik, uh, Sandman in Madden. And he was one of the world's top Madden players or Americas. I don't think anyone else. Yeah, there's, any other countries there's not really game. a world. Uh, maybe Canada. Canada plays it. Um, and he beat me 105 to six. Oh, that rules. Were, were you considerably good at Madden at that uh, time? You would no, say? but I wasn't like terrible at it. Um, but I, I mean, like I didn't try. Like if I had like thought about it more, maybe I would have been like, oh, I can slow the game down and tried it but like I, he would have destroyed me anyway i he was angry that i scored against him like nice. i scored and it was like 56 to 6 and i went for two like in case i came back i hit daigo once in street fighter so ooh, and uh you can retire on that yeah so anyway he then won the world the the world madden championship the following january because of that practice you provided because of that it. practice against me so really i just think a story about us you know <laughs> is, is, yeah. is the way to go i mean there's oh my there's God. the the obvious one where I don't think you can you could make an episode of a TV show you can make a, a movie but the 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 guy who played NASCAR on the on the GameCube like that's it's it's obvious we've all heard about it but he yeah. he he learned about the the scraping technique uh, around the edge of the field and mm -hmm. he, then he did it in real life once and then they made an entire rule yeah, so that yeah. you can't do that anymore <laughs> like I think that's that's pretty fun. That's the rule change. Get rid of that rule. Allow guys to just slam the gas and, and hit. Yeah, they'll, they'll just be... Kill weird. two dozen. They'll uh, all die. <laughs> everybody dying, yeah. They don't die so much in NASCAR anymore. To make an actual realistic movie about the making of a game, and it's just extremely boring. You yeah. do that. Like one of those like nine-hour French films of uh, yeah. like, or Italian neorealism. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like people being really frustrated at like, you know, why is this build time so long it's footage of people checking their phones yeah for, for many many years i swore that it would be a great idea to make a movie about the story of tetris and then they did mm -hmm. this year yeah. and i still haven't seen it and it was fantastic did you watch it <laughs> no i, didn't uh, I mean it, it, it might, i don't know it might be okay uh, it seems like it might not be horrible i just i really liked that bbc documentary that was oh about yeah i the, love oh, that yeah i like topic. that yeah yeah so it's like why not a recommendation this week from all of us is uh from russia with love the bbc documentary go find yeah. it yeah yeah i i can't speak to the uh the the apple tv plus uh, Tetris movie. I just imagine him getting in like well choreographed fist fights and jumping off of roofs and stuff. That's my imagination of what's going to happen. Oh, it's that's in the trailer. Yeah, apparently it's pretty straight, and there's like one or two action scenes that feel forced. Well, apparently they just put in like this weird KGB subplot that is not real at all. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's uh, definitely it's... some fake stuff in there. And I'm pretty sure, um, you know, all of us will be angry at that scene that's like, hello, I'm a white man and this is the Game Boy. I invented it, you know? I, <laughs> um, I, I believe I, I actually scrolled through the cast list on Apple TV and it seems as though there are many Japanese actors in the movie. So Yeah, uh, yeah he doesn't invent it. He just tells them w what the killer app will be because they have no idea how it is how a film to... made with the with the collaboration of Nintendo. So it, it does. It's I mean. Uh, I mean, I don't want to def go to bat for this movie. I just have said you I haven't, haven't I haven't even watched, but uh, yeah. I, I'm sure that there was more than uh, more than enough studio meddlement that wound up with the action scenes or jokes or whatever. I like that Taron Edgerton guy. I think that guy's that show Blackbird on Apple TV. Y'all watch that. that was pretty good. Uh, Paul Walter Hauser, bro. I have one more real answer for this one. That's, oh, yeah, uh, that's depressing. But you could almost certainly make a movie about a guy who trained on all those uh, military sims and then went and shot people successfully in real life. Mm, uh, yeah. You could definitely make... I mean, I, I mean, like, the army. I mean, like... Yeah. A, and that movie was called Ender's Game. Oh, right. Endgame, dude. Avengers Endgame? Avengers Ender's Game? Yeah, Avengers Ender's Game. A couple of years back, there was this uh, movie about Christmas... Did y'all remember this? It was about a oh, kid who wasn't wants a Neil Nintendo. Patrick Harris in it. Yeah, NPH was in there. He yeah. played the the dad in the future. 
Yeah. Uh, mm. An interesting yeah. twist. I thought this was a joke at first. You were like, there is this movie about Christmas. And I was like, oh. It's called like 8-Bit Christmas or whatever, yeah. right? Oh, um, which is, we watched it here. We, we put it on. I guess would be the way. So when I say we watched, you know, you, you, when you when you're teaching English as a second language, you have to correct people who don't know the difference between seeing a movie and watching a movie. Right. Uh, watching a movie uh, means you're watching it at home. Seeing it means you're going to see it in a movie theater or a cinema if you're in uh, England. Yeah, that's right. There's there's a third a third verb we've developed in the more modern era, especially, uh, you know, it's streaming and coronavirus is we, we put it on. We put this movie on. <laughs> it means you, you, we put it on. It doesn't mean you're uh, you're going to watch the whole thing. It doesn't mean you're going to pay attention. It doesn't mean you're going to enjoy it. It doesn't mean you're prepped to enjoy it. We put it on, ended up getting through it. Right. So that's the new the new verb framework for talking about movies. Uh, we ended up getting through this movie. It's about a kid who wants an NES for Christmas and goes to great lengths to conspire to get a Nintendo Entertainment System for Christmas. And they're just saying Nintendo, 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 just constantly, right? And every time they show, like, the rich kid with the Nintendo, who all the kids gather in his house to see him play the Nintendo. Frank, did you see this movie? Absolutely not. Okay, well, <laughs> well, I, I mean, I figured this is the sort of thing maybe you would have also. We, Me and Frank have the same TV. We have gaming PCs plugged into our TVs. I figured we have a couple things in common. Frank's got a mister. I figured we have a couple things in common. Maybe he'd put on this movie as well. Frank, it'll interest you if you ever decide to put it on, or if you don't, it'll interest you to hear me describe what I'm about to describe, which is... Okay, and I just want to I just want to point out that I, 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 I attempted this. I, I put on <laughs> Ryan Reynolds' movie where he's like in the video game. Oh, Free Guy. Free Guy. Yeah, I put yeah, on Free Guy. I put that on as well. I could not make it past like 27 minutes yeah I, I i ended up getting through the whole thing because i i, I meant to reference it in my boku no nazi Asmi video at a, a very a very specific my, my point. point is that like all of these movies are free guy to me yeah yeah <laughs> the free guy insists repeatedly and constantly that they're just a video game that's not about killing would never succeed taika waititi plays a uh a, a cynical video game publisher executive who uh wants all traces of non-violence scrubbed from his big uh open world uh blockbuster video game and it's it's just kind of really like bizarrely tone deaf in a way that was sort of interesting anyway what would interest you about this film frank which you know i'm just i'm just using this as a rhetorical device at this point is that none of the games are real they just they got some some pixel artists to do like fake games they do mention some games right okay I won't spoil which ones, but <laughs> no first party video games. I was there, man, in real life. I was at that kid's house, which, you know, he, that kid, there were there were thousands of him dotted across the landscape of this blasted, nasty country. And uh, I was I was in that kid's house. And uh, man, the fact that they don't say Super Mario Brothers once in that whole movie was making me feel insane. <laughs> <laughs> what are the wait what are the fake game names like is it like like mark tyson's boxing match? no no it's just like made up stuff oh, just like oh we played bumblebee wizards it is it we is like some catalyst it is like some ritzcrackers.com made a flash game looking yeah, yeah, yeah. like early 2010s cynical like pixels shapes are wrong oh, like like the wrestler yeah like the wrestler uh, yeah except the wrestler game was a little more real looking wasn't it it looked a little bit more like a real game it, it, was, it was all right the ones in this this 8-bit 8-bit uh christmas uh yippee movie were uh really brazenly fake looking so my quote unquote joke answer to this would be okay so this this movie i guess did some numbers on hbo max can't even call it hbo max anymore it did some some numbers on hbo max because people were willing to uh, dip the teabag of their nostalgia in so my my joke here is what i wanted from it and i was explaining to mimsy the whole time like you know that's not actually uh what video games were like uh, <laughs> they would have been talking about super mario brothers my my great joke answer here the punchline is coming are y'all ready would be a movie for Tubi. That's about a kid who got a wanted a Turbo Graphics for Christmas, and it uses real games. What do you <laughs> nice. think, Brandon? I think it's pretty good uh, c coming from the person who who was also at the rich kid's house. Except in this case, in my case, the rich kid whose family had won the lottery, bought a house Shoot. on the hill, uh, and he got a Turbo Graphics 
right when it came out. God, that And hurts. I played it on a big TV, and his grandma was sleeping downstairs and didn't speak English and didn't have any teeth and stuff. And uh, and I was looking at this Keith Courage, and I was like, yeah, I guess that is pretty good. I will reveal that the, the, the rich kid whose house I played Super Mario Brothers at also had a mom who didn't speak English. So nice. I'm not sweating it either here. <laughs> like, uh, I'm... <laughs> Re English speaking moms, yeah, yeah. Re re uh, acquaintanceship with other people's non English speaking moms, yeah. What were we talking about? They're <laughs> good. Uh, we There's... were going on to the lighting round. Yes. There's got to be a couple. Also, I think that Gran Turismo movie looks okay, but the trailer has way too many parts where uh, David Harbor, who's cool, I I think that guy's cool. There's too many parts where his character goes, "You're just sitting at home on your sofa eating Cheetos, <laughs> yeah. playing video games." It's like, can we just stop with that? People sit in god darn racing chairs and play video games now. Doesn't make sense. I don't do it. They sell they sell them at IKEA. They sell those gaming chairs at I IKEA. I know, I know, I know has like a full like racing setup and yeah. does like e racing events and yeah. things like that. The fact that that movie just uh, kicks the can of that uh, gamers in their mom's like basement to yeah, 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 yeah. and it's like all those kids who were competing in that Gran Turismo championship uh even on the even in the PS3 days, they all had uh, what we would describe now as sick rigs. Yeah, they at had home. full setups, and their and their parents were probably supportive because yeah, their parents may have played video games growing up. I Man, I, I I'm I'm here entertaining a fantasy scenario, as which is you know you reach a certain age in your life and you start to be like, if I'd been born ten years later, what would this have been like? And it's like I bet my dad would have thought it was real cool of me to play Gran Turismo. If uh, if uh, if I'd been in the uh, vicinity of my dad when uh, I first uh, started playing Gran Turismo, if I'd played Gran Turismo in high school and I was got serious about it, my dad would probably be like, "Yeah, son, that's pretty cool." You driving, son? That never happened with regard to anything I've ever done in my life. My but... father uh, played NES with me all the time. He beat Zelda two, which is shoot one of the Ooh. more impressive things I think he's ever done. Man, uh, that owns that's that's hard for gamers yeah 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 yeah. Uh, zelda 2 adventure of link is uh it is god darn dark souls before dark souls man like it's it's ridiculously meticulous and like i don't think we had like a like strategy guide to know that like you had to use thunderbird on that like bird you fight near the end or whatever to make it easier like i think we just figured it out at some point you've got to be like deep in deep in the weeds of that game that's the most i like that i'm saying we as if i beat it at you know you were just you were just a chibis i was just there there. i like to think i helped you know moral support i watched the local rich kid beat it oh okay he didn't have a strategy guide either he's a lawyer now i'd like to go on to our lightning round please uh we're playing one of my favorite games we're playing game faq and a's uh, oh, yeah. These days, when you go to GameFAQs.com, mm-hmm. you'll see that every single video game has its own custom message board uh, that takes the form where you can submit questions about the game and anyone can answer them. You could click to expand them. I choose not to click to expand them. Uh, I, what I do for this segment is I take a particular game, pick uh-huh. 10 of the questions on that board, uh-huh. and we have to answer them as snappily as possible. The best stuff is in here. Yes, so snappy answers to gamer questions. Exactly. Snappy answers to gamey questions. This week we're doing Madden NFL. These are all about Madden NFL. Sweet. Question number one. How can I remove an injured player from trade block? Trade block? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, have to, you have to pay their bail. <laughs> Send them to the glue factory. <laughs> all right. Question two. What do you guys think is the best strategy item combination? A uh, joint and lighter. A football and a helmet, I think, would be a good combination <laughs> for Madden. I, I think those games have like, oh, if you, you can like give the fans a bobblehead giveaway and you end up like, you know, increasing their morale. So I'm going to say that. Uh, I'm, I'm actually going to change my answer. Uh, uh, coin doubler and double jump. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> and I, I watched uh, that last boy. Boy Scout movie, which I recommend everybody watch the first uh, five minutes of it, um, and the answer is uh, a football and a gun. <laughs> That's very good. That uh, is three, good. Three ticket and merchandise prices. Yes. Uh, make them mid level, so you make your money, but also the fans are somewhat happy. Yeah. yeah Moderation. That's good, good advice. Yeah. Yeah. That is actionable advice. Yeah. Well, until you like win a championship or whatever, you can yeah. adjust it. Then you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why am I getting no contract offers in franchise mode? 
You gotta get good. Because you suck. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> you need to increase your receiving kills. points or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kills. Yeah. Yeah. You need to. You need to <laughs> decrease like, your kills. Yeah. Buy some like EA Sports tokens, credits, whatever they're called, and you know, beef up your your stats. Dan, just just so you know, we don't have to. We're not actually trying to answer these questions for let these people. Talk. Okay, okay. Let to, him talk. Okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to make I'm trying to make jokes that are just not working. Let him cook. Oh, it's fun. I just checked. I just checked and my game fact that I wrote, the only one is no longer up there. What? It was What did you write it for? Uh, so I used to run uh, a relatively popular GeoCities site for Resident Evil nice. when I was in high Ooh. school. Um, and I wrote a guide to the Resident Evil 2 demo, like a full walkthrough. Shoot! But, but I can see why it's not up anymore because I don't. I don't think anyone could. I don't know. They should. They no, should put it preserve back up that there. stuff. It's, it's, it it's a couple. There. It's a couple kilobytes. It's like they. They should keep that stuff. I don't. I don't know what, where it went. Um, I will have to take a look and see. You got to find it. Send find it to it. us. We'll put it in our bonus. Uh, All right. Yeah, we'll, right. Put, we'll put it on the Patreon. Uh, here's my next question. How do I keep my franchise realistic long term? Oh, you got to keep buying uh, the annual updates. Um, yeah. The graphics just get better. You got to give your players boring names. You can't name everybody like <laughs> like uh, like General Clown Fist or whatever. Like you have to everybody. You have to give them the realistic names. I get why people try to like keep it realistic. But like, I don't know. It's Madden. Like if you're going to cheese the game, like if it allows you to cheese the game, you can cheese it. And like. Oh, I ran for two two thousand yards with my quarterback this season because I figured out a way that the defense can't stop him. You know, I don't know if it's like a one player game. Like keeping it realistic has no fun for me. I want to win like eleven straight Super Bowls and ruin the NFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, uh, embrace uh, the surreal, right? I keep yeah. breaking left analog sticks. Any recommendations? Oh yeah, buy the uh, the the gully kit replacement analog sticks. They don't have drift. They they don't use the like the magnetic thing, I guess. Um, so they they work just fine. So yeah, but but he's breaking them though. Wait, I got it. Remap your buttons to ah, use the right analog stick. Yeah. <laughs> there oh yeah, you go. flip them, flip them, and swap them. Just every month or so, flip them like you're supposed to do with your mattress. <laughs> Let the analog stick cool off a yeah, bit. Yeah, and then once yeah. you break that, then you can buy a new controller. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, my actual answer is, dude, calm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe you know, just don't buy the nine dollar controller. Maybe, maybe go for the slightly, slightly. Well, nice maybe controller. they should. I mean, maybe it should be like me with non-stick pans. You just go get the one at IKEA because it's just yeah. gonna stop working anyway. So just get another. You don't one. cook on a cast iron, Frank. I do. Oh, okay. I'm just just making it's not, sure. It's not non-stick enough for my uh, my scrambled egg needs. Uh, speaking of scrambled eggs, when my quarterback is scrambling, how do I make him slide? Oh, well, you get a non, you put him on non-stick uh, non-stick <laughs> turf. Yeah, yeah right. you, got, you got to reduce the uh, friction to zero on the field. Cast Iron Stadium. How do you need to write that in as a question? I, I don't understand <laughs> why that's not Googleable itself. Like that's got to be in the instruction manual. Yeah, a lot of these kids, you know, they don't uh, they don't know what the instruction manual like is. Like if it's like 1994 and you need to like write into Game Pro magazine to be like, oh, I don't know how to pass in Madden. God, yeah. Can you imagine waiting like two months to learn how to pass in Madden? <laughs> yeah, you because you have to wait and see what like yeah what what if it made it into the game pro letters page mommy did the new game pro arrive no ours is not to reason why but to answer pith alive okay that's okay uh, Next. hey what happened to left-handed quarterbacks oh oh they, they, they're all in jail <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think just, that's it you, you can just invert your screen that has to be a feature, and then it's like you have a left-handed. Oh yeah, play in mirror mode and everything. Yeah, 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 mirror yeah. mode. That's what you I'm haven't unlocked about. mirror mode yet. What happened uh, to the left-handed quarterbacks is they kept throwing the ball the wrong way and scoring yeah. goals in the wrong goal, right? <laughs> That's what happened, and they've all been fired, sent to the glue factory. As commissioner, how do I force a human team to forfeit? <laughs> threaten uh, them with the glue factory. How, yeah, like how do you <laughs> exactly. not know how to threaten? Just you know, hire some large men and and send them over to the team's headquarters. And if that doesn't work, you can get your hands dirty like you used to. I I've, yeah. I haven't played Madden in a while, 
what, what is this mode? <laughs> send them a send them a grainy uh, flip phone photograph of your finger poised over the glue factory button. <laughs> uh, I, I'm surprised that, that this was my first thought and not anybody else's. But uh, you just send up the bat signal and say that they're that they're they've committed a crime. Right, because you're the commissioner. I'm the commissioner. Uh, yeah, commissioner uh, Gordon. Yeah. Uh, last question: How to change the weather? Uh, uh, oh, the answer is just the X Men theme song. Do, 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 do. That yeah. one? Yeah. That's no. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, the canonical answer. Frank, you're our winner. Congratulations. Yeah, I figured. Not, yeah. Not kind of <laughs> you, you did too there. good. Yeah, I'm you sorry. forgot not to try. Here is the point in the show where if you would like to recommend anything to our listeners to check out between episodes, other than from Russia with Love, the Tetris documentary, uh, now's a good time to do that, whether it's something that you're working on or something you're enjoying or something you think would benefit our audience. I got some, so I'll start. One is don't forget to save if you're playing an old video game (laughs) because sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you can just be like, yeah, I I can keep going because like it's not too difficult. But don't forget that sometimes the game will just glitch and fail and then you'll just lose a bunch of progress because uh, sometimes the games aren't built 100 percent foolproof and you just smack into a difficult zone. So don't forget to save. Um I'm going to recommend two more things, I think. One is uh, Dairy Girls Season 3. Which, oh, I watched that whole show. Which is on Netflix. Uh, I don't have Netflix anymore, again, because they, they updated their sharing thing. So uh, too bad for them and me. But I finished Dairy Girls right before that. And um, it's interesting in that. So I, I kind of liked the first season. I didn't like the second season that much. But the third season has this odd thing I've never seen anywhere else where... You know how when you're watching a a series and then an episode comes on, you're like, oh, this is the last one. Because, Mm -hmm. like, suddenly the projection values have changed a little bit Uh and the story feels more expansive and stuff. Every single episode in this, uh, maybe not the first, I don't remember, but, yeah, I think even the first, they all feel like the end of a season. Um, And that's, I've never seen that in a series before, and it's no wonder they're not making another one because they they all feel like that. That's pretty funny. Uh, and then lastly, it makes sense since we're doing a little bit more of a sports themed one. A- everyone who thinks that I'm a uh, hardcore music liker, please shut your ears forever because I'm a- about to m- recommend you some metalcore uh, featuring Vocaloids. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> so um, uh, check out Yo Yo Yupe's Sick EP, which is pretty good and uses, um, it actually uses an AI equipped vocaloid but it it really is different sounding and it's pretty neat uh and and it's all just that awful metalcore stuff but it's very cat catchy um and another is uh utsupi's song ga which is about um being a moth and is and uses hatsune miku to better effect than than often she is used so check those out if you want to hear some 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 blasting vocaloid <laughs> metalcore uh the end goodbye the end i can go yeah go please do i uh i write for i and i'm an editor at and a co-owner of co-founder of a website called defector media a cooperatively owned sports and culture and other thing blog um you can check it out i think you get a couple free articles with just Heck your of a website with with just your email it, you know don't go around our paywall but if you heck of a business if you if you're listening to this i'm sure you know how to get around a paywall Two, i'm just looking like we ran a review of diablo 4 today um we did a very funny review patrick redford wrote a uh very funny review of the lord of the rings Gollum video game recently which oh yeah i caught a question about that for time people people don't like that game very much not so good yeah um it's a subscription website it's um you know most of our funding is from subscriptions and if you check it out and are interested in it uh please consider subscribing does that go well yeah wait are you kidding it it is going well um amazingly um so monday the 19th this will not be up yet but i can plug it a little bit i have a freelance piece in lapham's quarterly later this week of a lit mag um i know lapham it is about a an essay on the back of a basketball uh, zone defense strategy book 
published in 1942. I will take no follow up questions. That's fine. And yeah, I'm DHM on Twitter. I don't really tweet that much anymore. My fellow um, three, uh, yeah, three yeah. character Twitter handle however. Uh, yeah, I I quit for a bit. I came back to promote like a T shirt I was selling. And uh, every time I'm there, I'm like, oh, I should have just continued to quit. But uh, I'm also Dan McQuaid, uh, M C Q U A D E on Instagram, um, and I mainly post pictures of my cat and she's very cute so that may be the place to follow me. instagram uh I'm, I'm passing today no Rex from me you you already recommended the tetris move yeah, you right. already did that was your rec- I, I would also recommend you check out uh, defector.com uh which is a very good website um i really liked the website deadspin.com uh which uh disappeared one day Shame about that whole situation. Yeah, that yeah. website uh, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. yeah. So defector dot com uh, is uh, you know what? It's better than deadspin dot com. It is for a large uh, variety of reasons. One being that you know it's basically everybody. Is it everybody? It's not everybody, but it's it's a lot of people. It's 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 you know it's it's basically uh, that website. It needs a dark mode. If you just put a dark mode on, there's a button for me to click. That would be nice. That is noted. I will. I will. <laughs> That's where they cover all the twisted sports news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dark mode where you, where you get to read about the mutant league football news. Yeah, I, I did have a mini viral article the other day about um, a video that was going around about Livy rizzing, uh, rizzing up baby, baby Gronk. Gronk. Yeah, at, looking at it right here. Yeah, mine. I was. I thought was pretty fun. Yeah, I read this article. Oh, I read this article. I read almost all of them, Jerry. Just letting you know. Look out. I'm reading them. I'm out there. I'm reading here. I, I read your article about the uh, the American Dream Mall. Oh, yeah. I had a good time at the American I Dream really, Mall. I've been wanting to go there for a while. Um, I'm going to go to the King of Prussia Mall pretty soon. Dan all right. McQuaid. When you go, I'll, 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 let me know. I live like a half hour from oh, there. I will, yeah. I, will, I will certainly uh, let you know. I feel like the King of Prussia ought to be dead by now. <laughs> K.O.P., bro. King of Prussia will never he die. He lives forever. All right, I have a recommendation. All 20 episodes of Detroiters are on ComedyCentral.com. Check that out. Uh, Watch that show. Had a great time. Hot dog. One of the all-time great shows. Hot dog bowl. Yeah. It's like a big bowl of hot dogs just uh, all chopped up in a bowl. (laughs) Tell your dad I said, what's up, Doc? Yeah, don't tell your dad I said, what's up, Doc? Um, I I think I make a reference to that show at least once per week, uh, and almost nobody ever seems to notice or hit me back with it. It's so good. I went to I went to Temple Bar when I was in uh, Detroit. Um, Sorry, I gotta go. Oh, see you later, Frank. Frank, watch Detroiters. Check it out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. If you enjoyed this or any episode of Insert Credit, please rate and review our show whenever and however you can. You could also support us on patreoncom slash Credit, where you could become a patron to submit your own questions, listen to monthly bonus episodes, and get our regular weekly episodes ad free. Uh, you could also join our community at forums.insertcredit.com. Send all business inquiries to show at insertcredit.com. And find our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash insert credit show. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn with original music by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I'm Dan McQuaid. And that's the end of our show. Bomp. Uh, Thank you and goodbye.